Hello everyone, and welcome to the second tutorial in the Unity light mapping series. And in this particular, in this tutorial, I, I want to expand upon the use of light mapping in Unity, especially for light, especially for lighting environments. Uh, now, what you're seeing here right now is well, part of a level that I was working on for my game project, and I figured it would be a wonderful candidate for lighting with Beast. Now you're seeing here is a nice cobblestone street, a very, well, rather scary looking sky with a moon in the background. We have here um, one of the characters in my game using um, one of the new shaders I've been putting together for, um, for visual effect. And this inconspicuous blue ball right here. Now you're probably asking yourself, why do I have a blue ball on my scene? Well, once you once you use Beast to make a level, you'll see why when we go ahead and use it. So, without further ado, let's um start light mapping. Now, before I begin, I would like to give you a little background on the shaders that I'm using, in case some of you would like to create um specialized shaders. If you go here, if you notice in my um my material here, yes, and it says glowy balls. Um, basically, I have this tag called self illumine, which stands for self illumination. Now, I recently found this out when I was um, recreating my shaders for Beast. And what happens is, when you use self illumination, it, it is a flag that tells Beast to take emission into account when you're baking a your light map. Now, now you're baking a light map, you gotta think of a couple of things. Do you, want, do you want to create a neon sign, or how bright is the object going to be? If I go to switch to game view, I do have HDR, HDR bloom and um, tone mapping enabled. You can notice how it has this beautiful, this beautiful room of light right here. It is a little extreme, but extreme usually is the best example. Now let's go ahead and look at this shack right here. This nice ordinary looking shack. You know, if you noticed it, if you're playing like Skyrim or um, World of Warcraft, you'll see a lot of these. But notice how this particular shack is covered mostly in darkness. If I select the object in question, you'll see that I have the um, oven, a pump, an anvil, a water bucket, and a table full of tools. Now, while that's really good and everything, it's hidden shadow, which is kind of boring, and you want to avoid having a, having some really beautiful objects speak you know, baked in shadow. We don't want that happening. So we're gonna fix this up a little bit so that we can get the, this um, lighting going. So we're seeing here now is I have um, dual light maps set up. My quality is to high. My bounces are set to four. The color of my skylight is actually the color of the sky here. Now what I've noticed about lighting levels, especially nighttime levels, it is honestly very difficult to find a way to light a level effectively. Like, let's say you live, I don't know, in a city somewhere, you would normally see this kind of lighting. But of course, sometimes it would not hurt to use a little creative license and use the light from the sky. Essentially, as, as, essentially as bounce light. Because um, imagine you're in that, if you, outside, if you went outside right now in a, in a moonlit night, you would notice how light still bounces around in a dark environment, even though it is nighttime. If I go ahead now and set my skylight color to black, what that does, it essentially ignores the color of the sky, which is good if you're baking an interior scene and you just want to use um, the lights on the interior as your um, as your sources of energy. So if I go ahead, go ahead and hit bake, if I go ahead and select the um, the blacksmith's forge and hit bake selected, what Beast will do is Beast will bake the object selected. Now the cool thing about this is if you have a prefab, Beast will still bake that. It will consider it as a single selection because you chose an entire you chose a prefab. And when you notice here, when I turned off when I turned the skylight color to black, all it did all it did was was have the light all it did was bounce the light around in the scene. Which is cool, which is really cool and everything if you're in an interior room and you're creating some sort of like special ambience. But notice here, this is really really dark. 
And while that's cool and everything, I want to take some creative license and give the level some sort of life. So I'm not going to go to the eyedropper. I'm going to return my skylight color to, to the color it was previously. I think I think this color was um, it's a, it's a very nice color. So, and also bear in mind too that when you when you want to bake selected with with, um, with beast, if you go ahead and pick up if you go ahead and pick another object to bake, what will happen is beast will overwrite the light map that currently exists in the level. So I'm giving you a heads up on that. Please stop baking select a lot of objects. So let's return to a blacksmith's forge, and I'm going to bake it again. And I want you to watch very carefully what happens when I bake my scene. So. I'm gonna let it bake a little bit. And it's cool thing about this, it's pretty fast, considering that's 500 rays, and it's one object, it's pretty low poly. Now if you have shaders, great textures on this object, it is going to look amazing when you finish it. So now that, now that our beast is finished light mapping the object, now, now you'll see that the light from the oven is, you know, hitting the ceiling, hit the wall, and also the bleed from this is bleeding around, around the other objects which is quite realistic. If I turn this off, you, you'll notice a grand difference when you bake your light map. Everything looks way better now than before. Everything. The light looks natural, the surface looks much better, and although it is a, a flat shaded polygon, it, you know, it literally is on purpose. So, the next step, the next step we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bake the entire scene. Now, I must warn you though that we bake using Beast, when you bake your entire scene, the amount of time the Beast takes to calculate is, it all depends on the number of bottom gathered rays in your scene. You know, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you're working on a tight budget and you want to save time and performance, you can go, you can go pretty high, but don't go, don't go crazy with it. Because again, when you go that high, you, you, you will incur a lot of um, render time in your scene. You know, and a lot of coffee breaks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear the light map. Well, you don't have to, but I'm going to in this case clear the light map, and I'm going to switch to my um, game view here. And again, you notice how everything there's a lot of shadow here, baked in black. And by the way, if you're wondering why the shadows are black, it's because in all my scenes I turn down the ambience. You know, there's an option in here called ambience in Render tab. If I click here, Render settings. This is the, um, the ambient lighting. I keep that black because, um, in reality, there's no such thing as ambient light. You know, such as uh, the fake, you know, the fake lighting on the old on the old games. I turn this up a little bit. This is this is how it look on my old on my old mom and pops console. So we'll keep this black. I'm going to pause the video here right now, and I'm going to go ahead and bake up this light map. So don't go away. We'll be right back. And welcome back to this video tutorial. And what you see now is the result of um, the beast light mapping that I used to bake my level. Now you probably now we notice now all, all the all the lighting in the level is much more realistic now. You see a lot, a lot of the sky light being baked onto the surface. You see the shadows are much brighter now, and you can even see the blue tint from this ball em, em, emitting on the character model and the surrounding buildings, as well as the ground plane here. Which, by the way, is using um, normal mapping and parallax mapping to get the look of bricks. Now, you're probably noticing how the um, global illumination didn't affect the character in any way. Well, that's because in Unity, um, skeletal meshes do not use light mapping because um, they're going to be moving. And, you know, I mean, you know how, do you make a, how do you light map an object that moves? Well, we'll fit, basically, Unity introduced a way to fix that issue by using light probes. If you've seen the game like Shadow Gun, you'll notice how if I move the character back to a, to a certain distance, you notice how the blue tint disappears on the model. You know, kind of like I'm kind of like I'm walking away from the light source that's in the level. Now, now of course, these light these pixel, these um sources they don't cast shadows; they're only used for emission. Now, if you want to get this on the character. You have to um, click an option to do that. To do that, you go here and click on light probes. If I deselect it, you see how the blue tint disappears from the character, which although he's metal, 
it is still influences the character's appearance. If I select it again, you see how the light probes show up in the character. And we, by the way, in the next tutorial, I will show you how to um, use the light probes properly and set them up in your scenes. But without further ado, I want to thank you for watching this tutorial on Advanced Beast Flight Mapping. Now have a pleasant night and happy gaming.